What's going on, everybody? You're watching the Diary of a Mad Black Cameraman. I am the host, your host, Ron Diggity Downs, Ron Downs Jr. In this video, I'm actually going to be discussing and showing you how I develop my own black and white film at home. This camera right here is a Yashica Zoom Tech 60. It's one of the cameras I've been using a lot recently. Um, and then I have this Canon, Canonet QL17. Um, these two cameras right here have been my two main go-to cameras as of recently in terms of shooting film. This actually has a roll of film in it that I'm about to develop, so I'm gonna take that out back of the camera, the film. Uh, this is one of the film stocks that I use. This is actually one of the film stocks that I use. Um, I have two primary ones that I go to. One of them is this Arista EDU Ultra Black. The other film that I go to is this Kodak 400 T Max. These are my two favorite films I've tried a lot of different black and white films, but in terms of what I shoot and how I want my images to look, these give me the most crisp and low, um, low noise images. I wanna say there's five main steps to being able to develop your film right here at home. The first step I would say is preparation before you do anything. So you definitely wanna know what tools you need, what tools you're using, and what those tools exactly do. You'll definitely need to have a Patterson tank, you'll definitely need some type of developer, and you'll definitely need some type of solution. Me personally, I use Kodak's T-Max developer and Codafix solution for all of my photos. The developer is the chemical that turns the image visible on the rolls of film, and the solution basically makes the image stay permanent permanent on the roll. A part of knowing how everything works is knowing your developer. Each developer requires a different temperature and a different time limit to develop the images. If you go to digitaltruth.com or you google mass depth chart, you're able to type in the developer that you're using and the type of film that you have and it will tell you the exact temperature and the exact time that you need. This way it's clear as day and you don't have to figure anything out or guess. The second step is kind of two in one but you can load in your reel of film to the tank and pour in your developer. Developer. A couple of things to know before going into this, you're definitely going to have to go into the dark so you want to be familiar with your equipment um, before going into the dark. So if you need to practice on a dummy roll of film, if you need to do it in the light before going to the dark, I highly recommend it. It's something that I did and it definitely helped me uh, before going into the dark because once you get in the room and it's dark, if you turn the lights back on while uh, the film is open and exposed, you'll lose all of the images. Once I have everything laid out, one of the things that I start to do is set the temperature for my water and I get the Kodak T-Max developer ready to mix. I need 400 milliliters of water at 24 degrees Celsius and I also need 100 milliliters of the developer. Now that I have my developer set and my temperature is where I need it to be, I'm ready to take the film out of the can and load it into the reel. Now there are tools for this, however I just personally didn't want to buy the tools and I'm able to use my hands uh, to open up the reel which is very easy. On the roll of film where the film would normally come out, you'll see this little fuzzy part and if you look close enough or take your fingers and run them in between, there's a small crack and it's big enough for you to kind of like get your fingers in between and just pry it open. Once the roll of film is out, you take the film, you want to cut the leader off, the front little piece, and you begin to load the film into the reel. Reel it up until it's completely done. You can take the lid to the container, place the reel with the film inside of the Patterson tank, close the container. Once the container is closed with the reel inside of the tank, you can turn the lights back on and you're good to go for the rest of the process. At this point, I just go back, I get the chemical that I mix, and I set a timer for four minutes 
Um, usually for me, I'll set it for maybe 410 or 4 minutes and 15 seconds just because I know it'll take me some time to pour the developer into the tank. With this, you agitate the film every minute for 15 seconds. And by agitating it, it helps the developer reach all of the film evenly and there's no blank spots or dark spots and it helps process the film evenly. Once that four minutes is over, you want to take that developer and you want to pour it out. However, you don't want to pour it in the sink. You want to maybe have like a bottle or some type of container that is disposable that you can pour it into again because these are chemicals. You don't want to just continuously pour chemicals down your sink. It'll probably end up stinking. I've learned from experience. The third step is what we call a stop bath. The stop bath basically stops the chemicals in the developer from processing and making the images too dark. You can go ahead and set another timer for a minute. Again, me, I just set it for a minute 10, a minute 15, just to give myself an extra couple of seconds to have it all the way pouring in. I let that sit for a minute. I don't have to agitate anything. I don't have to do anything. I let it sit for a minute. Once that minute is up, I can take that water out and pour it out. The fourth step is pouring in the solution. And the solution basically makes the image stay permanent on the roll. Once you've taken the water out, you can take your solution and pour it in. Set another timer for four minutes and you want to agitate it again every minute for 10 seconds this time. Once the time is up on this, you can pour this one back in the container because you can use this for reuse. And the final step is rinsing it off. Take your tank and fill it back up with cold water and let it sit for another five minutes. Once that five minutes is up, you can pour the water out, take out your reel and begin to look at your film. Hang it up, let it dry for an hour or two. Once it's finally dry, I cut it into strips of six and I just begin scanning it. So one of the main reasons why I got into doing and shooting film um, I started shooting it because I wanted to challenge myself as a photographer and get my skills and knowing my camera and getting the settings on my camera right. Um, and shooting film is one of the best ways to do it because back in the day you didn't have all this technology, you didn't have a screen to tell you what your numbers were and you wouldn't, you're wouldn't, you not able to look at the image before printing it out and all of that stuff you had to, with film, you have to know exactly what setting, what dial, what you need to know your stuff when it comes to film. And I really wanted to challenge myself to try to, you know, uh, get better. And I'll give you guys a free hack. This is what I did. I'm not even, there's no shame to it. Um, I feel like it's a great way to get started for somebody that's looking to get into shooting their own film. Um, if you have a digital camera, take your digital camera out with you when you start shooting your film. Take a photo on your digital camera and get the settings right. Once you have those settings right on your digital camera, take those same settings, punch those settings into your film camera, and you will get the same or nearly the same image as you would. And aside from that, shooting film is expensive. Um, purchasing multiple roles can get expensive. Having to take them somewhere to get them developed can be very expensive. So I shot on color for a while and I was spending almost 14 to $15 just to go get these pictures developed and printed out just so I can scan and post them on Instagram and not get any money for it. By the way, y'all should book me. But anyways, um, at first, it did seem daunting. I was very scared. Um, I probably spent two or three months overthinking the process before actually just buying the equipment that I needed and just going ahead and doing it. One thing I will say is, it's definitely trial and error. Shoot some stuff first, get a bunch of rolls. Um, and definitely do test shots, stuff that you won't mind messing up or if you don't get your first few batches right, you're not too upset because you didn't shoot these for a paying client and now they're upset because they don't have any images. Um, so definitely do a lot of test shooting, have a couple of extra rolls um, when it comes time to develop just in case that first one doesn't come out the way that you 
started with. I'm still learning certain things. I've messed up a lot of roles. <laughs> I've definitely messed up a lot of roles and, and definitely they were not test roles. They were roles of stuff I probably would have wanted, but it's okay, it's all trial and error, but it's, again, a different sense of pride and ownership knowing that, okay, I took this picture on a digital camera. No, I took this on a film camera and I had to trust myself and trust my instincts and trust my knowledge as a photographer um, it is different. So that's how you develop your own black and white film at home. It's very easy, not too many steps. It'll take you at least 25 to 30 minutes to do one roll. Um, if you guys have any other questions, please leave them in the comments. I'm going to put links and more info on some of the products that you need to purchase to be able to do this on your own at home. But um, again, thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. I sound like a YouTuber. I'm not a YouTuber. I swear I'm not a blogger or a vlogger or whatever you call it. Um, but yeah, share, comment if you have any questions. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm Ron Downs.